It is highly likely that extraterrestrial civilizations visiting us in person or via probes have been coming to this planet even in prehistoric times, and some believe that visitors from other planets may be responsible for reports of angels and chariots of fire in the Bible, for example, as well as those mysterious flying machines of ancient India called Vimanas that are chronicled in Hindu texts and Sanskrit epics. Even today, UFO testimonies continue to be recorded every day all over the world. A new official study could help to increase our chances to witness a UFO, depending on various factors. So, here is all you need to know about where and when you are most likely to spot a UFO based on a new report from the National UFO Reporting Center, the New Fork, about sightings. Section 51. Hi everyone, what's up guys? Dos Geek here with Section 51. Big thanks again for your support to the channel. First, you can like and share this new video right now to keep supporting Section 51. Watch this video until the end if you want to know more about when and where you are most likely to see UFOs. I hope you're well. If you are ready, let's start right now. The human race has passed through two stages on the way to discovering the truth about its place in the universe, and is now entering the third stage. The first stage, which started in ancient times and lasted till the Renaissance, was the belief that the Earth was the center of everything, the focal point of all creation, with the stars, planets, sun and moon revolving about it until a Polish polymath named Nicolaus Copernicus, during the 16th century, discovered that the Earth and every other known planet circles the Sun, and the Sun and Universe did not circle the Earth. Copernicus was so afraid of the backlash from the Church, who preached that man was the center of the universe, he opted to have his landmark book, which expounded his revolutionary theory, published just before his death. Those literate enough to read the book realized that the human race had now been relegated from the most important beings in existence to life forms living on an average planet that was circling an average star which was just one of countless others. The second stage was the realization that life must exist on other worlds, given the mind-boggling high number of planets in the universe. So what is the third stage? Well, the third stage, contact with life forms on other worlds, could begin in this century. However, it is highly likely that extraterrestrial civilizations visiting us in person or via probes have been coming to this planet even in prehistoric times, and some believe that visitors from other planets may be responsible for reports of angels and chariots of fire in the Bible, as well as those mysterious flying machines of ancient India called Vimanas that are chronicled in Hindu texts and Sanskrit epics. Strange airborne craft are also still being seen the world over, and regular viewers of this channel will know that some well-known areas in the world, like Area 51 for example, are no stranger to the UFO phenomenon. But new official study could help to increase our chances to witness a UFO, depending on various factors. So, here is all you need to know about where and when you are most likely to spot a UFO, based on a new report from the National UFO Reporting Center, the New Fork, about sightings that revealed where the best places are to spot alien activity in the US. Of course, for the moment, in the US, because it's still difficult to collect and to analyze data in other countries, it's still difficult to do this job on a larger scale for the moment because other countries do not necessarily have this type of team capable of centralizing all this data. 
but I'm sure it will improve in the future due to the growing interest in the subject of UFOs and due to the progressive disclosure of more and more encounters with these unknown phenomena. And you must know now that this recent rise in interest could be due to the Pentagon's long-anticipated UFO report back in June, which shared a classified brief on the existence of alien life. The reactions concerning the interest of this report remain lukewarm for the moment, but it is still an important move that goes in the direction of a collective awareness of the existence of this phenomena. So the new Fox new study compiled statistics from sightings of UFOs and suspected alien activity to determine where to go to catch a glimpse of the floating objects. The study showed that the best place to go is the west coast of the United States in the springtime. So you will have to plan the trip for next year. And California seems to be a particular favorite haunt of alien life forms having recorded a whopping 619 reported sightings. The data used in New Fox report is from 2020 and so some level of annual variance may affect the final results of the study. Moreover, I suspect that periods of lockdown due to COVID pandemic may have greatly increased UFO sightings in the sky because people were forced to spend more time at home. But maybe I'm wrong, this is just a supposition. I don't know exactly how it was with lockdown in the USA during COVID pandemic. So according to New Fork, Florida, Washington, Pennsylvania, and Texas follow behind California with around 619 reported UFO sightings by quite a stretch and make up the top five places to go to spot UFOs in the US. However, Washington DC and Missouri are the places for UFO seekers to avoid as they each only had one alien sighting last year. Now that the place to go has been revealed, it's also important to make sure you are there at the right time of year to see the extraterrestrial visitors. The report showed that December is the worst month to head out for a sighting as only 370 reports of sightings in the whole month. The best bet is to search for UFOs in springtime. Last year, April and March combined saw 1,873 sightings of alien activity recorded. It comes as no surprise, though, that the best time of day for sightings is under the cover of darkness between 8 p.m. and 12 a.m. Newfork has revealed then that any UFO seekers should get their trips booked and head to California next spring and look up to the sky between 8 p.m. and 12 a.m. for an increased chance to spot the infamous UFOs. But what about the desert regions in the world? How to prove that there is no more UFO activity in these parts of the globe if no one is there to confirm it? Perhaps even that there is more activity of unexplained phenomena in these areas precisely because it is easier to hide there, because there is no human presence to take pictures or videos. Do we know what is really happening in the great deserts of the globe? In the ice of the Antarctic? In the depths of the oceans? I think that New Fox study is still an interesting study. And it would also be interesting to compare this study with the reports of previous years to check whether these phenomena are recurrent in the same areas. But it's a bit biased by many factors. It depends on the population density of a geographical area, on how this population is equipped with new technologies to communicate via smartphones, cameras, internet, and on many other factors. So can we consider this study to be useful? Do these observation periods match with lockdown periods due to COVID in the USA? Will some of you follow the advice of this study in trying to go to the best spots to have a chance to capture a UFO in photo or video? By this way, will we be able to confirm the conclusions of this study? From another point of view, Do you know a place near you where there are regularly UFO phenomena in the sky? Where is it? Please let me know.
I hope you enjoyed this video. Section 51 is on social networks, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Don't forget to like this video, to share it, to subscribe, support Section 51. Thank you. I'll be back really soon. Open your eyes, watch the sky, live long and prosper.